Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show how to create a turret within Unity. So the first thing that we're going to do is just set up a basic scene with like a floor and then a cube in the middle that will be our turret. Great plane, great cube. Place some buffer at zero, zero, zero. It's for easier positioning stuff later. 0.5 because we want to place it on top of the floor. Alright, so now we've got this cube is going to act like our turret and then just sort of a base plane just to represent floor. Okay, so we're going to need mm, we're going to need three scripts for the actual turret itself and then we'll also need one for the projectile that gets fired from the turret. So I'm going to break this turret down into three separate components. So a tracking system for orientating and sort of aiming it towards the target then we are going to need a script for actually sort of shooting so call it a shooting system then we are also going to need another script for the actual turrets AI of what it's going to do so we'll call this the turret AI. now the turret AI will end up utilizing the shooting and tracking system but the shooting and tracking system won't utilize each other so you could put a tracking system onto the cube to make it look at stuff then if you want it to be able to shoot as well you could have the shooting system but they won't do anything until they get to an AI system so it may not make sense right now but later on you'll see what I mean so first thing we'll write is we'll go for the tracking system alright so to begin with we're going to make the tracking system now we're going to need two things, a target and a speed. So, speed at which to rotate at, and the target that we're going to rotate to aim at. So, we'll start off by just adding a public float for speed. And then we're going to make a private variable for the target. So, the reason why we're going for a private target and not a public target is because I plan to manipulate the target in code over in the editor. So another script can set the target over you keep setting it in the editor. This way it's more dynamic for the turret. Say you had multiple different types, what to switch between. This would make it a lot easier. So we're not going to need a start function for this one, so we can get rid of that to start with. Now we'll set this to null just to begin. And we'll set a default value for the speed of three. Oops. Yeah, three. There you go. Okay. So first thing we'll do is add a We'll add a function for setting up target. So we're going to make it a bool and we're going to call it set target. Just quickly add a parameter, game object, target. So the reason why I'm making this a bool function is because in case someone puts in a null target or for some reason later on you want it so that a target can't be changed in a certain circumstance, then we can return false and the other script can respond to this. So, I'll do a quick check, make sure that target is a valid game object, otherwise return false. And return true in this situation, so this guy will equal target. Alright, so nice and simple for setting up a target. Nothing too complicated there, right? Now, so if we've got a target, then we're going to want, we're also going to need one more parameter, and that can be a vector for a we're going to call it a last known position. So we'll use this for rotation to figure out where they're going to be aiming at. So we're not always updating the rotation. It'll only rot update the rotation if the position's changed. So we'll make this a vector 3. Oh, actually, I don't need that at all. Vector 3 dot 0. Right, so that'll definitely be null like target. So in the update. If last known position is the same as I'm on a target dot transform that position, then ugh. hmm no yeah if it doesn't equal that then it'll do this yeah so last known position. This way, if we lost the target, then 
will still orientate towards the last place we knew where the target was. So nice and easy. Right. So we will also from this, within this bit, we can we're gonna need a variable. Right. This time it'll be quaternion and it will be the uh lookout rotation. So in Unity there's a nice little function, look rotation equals quaternion dot lookout. Well, dot low rotation. Now we're gonna need this. Oh. Right, yeah, turn dot low rotation. This will figure out where to turn the turret to. Now the reason why we're storing this, not doing it instantly, is because this is going to give us the exact the exact turn we need to look at that spot. Uh, we're gonna want to sort of gradually turn to that. So we're gonna store this for now and then we'll move towards it at our speed. So, to get the forward vector, we will need to do the current position of, yes, we'll need to get the last known position of the object that we want to look at, and our current position. Getting the position of the target and the current position of the turret, we can work out the directional vector for looking at. Now, if we pass it into this function, that will return the rotation that we need. So, right now, we have stored the lookout rotation that we're going to go to. Okay, so now that we've calculated the lookout rotation, we are going to now orientate the turret towards the target. So what we need to do is transform.rotation equals quaternion dot rotate towards. Then we'll take our current rotation and to the lookout rotation. Then we can do speed times time dot delta time. And that will gradually rotate the turret to look at the target. Now we'll also do a small check just to make sure that transform.rotation doesn't equal look at rotation. Just a small optimization, so this way this isn't always getting run if you're already aiming at. Okay, so now if you've noticed I'm actually set this to now public as well, just for while we test this, just so that you can give it a target so that it'll rotate towards. Alright, so this should now work fine, but let's just make sure that it's sort of all protected so that if you forget to set some in, it's not going to throw mass errors. So, let's have a quick check, and if, if it's a target, then it's allowed to do all this pretty much. So if it's got a target, then you can do all this stuff, otherwise this will get called, and that way we're avoiding errors. So now if I switch back to Unity. So we've got a cube in the middle of the screen. Now I made a small mistake as we need a barrel for this gun. So let's create a cube. It's in the centre. Resize it to be like more gun barrelish. Then I'll position mine up one as it's a bit long. Oh, it's okay. There you go. So now I've got sort of a barrel to this weapon. Now I'm going to just create a quick material just for, um, so I can see this better in the light. Down there, the script, get down, alright. I'm going to create a material so I can actually see this in the light, so leave all the materials. Great, material, oh it's red. Let's change the albedo. So, actually, no, we're from the turret, so we'll have it blue. How to do this? There we go. Yeah. So, just quickly drag this thing that's called red. It shouldn't be called red. Uh, red. Blue. Call it blue, yeah. Okay, so now I've got a nice, very blue turret. But now we need a target, so quickly create another game object cube. Set it to 0 0.5, 0, and then we'll do minus 4.5 so it's sort of positioned at the back. So now this will have to rotate all the way there. Let's increase this thing speed to 30. Now make sure the barrel of the gun is part of the cube so it'll rotate with it. And then set the target as the other cube. So let's quickly create one more material. We'll call this one bread. I like to make this one red. Right, and then we'll put on that guy. Okay, so now if we click play, 
Oh, nice blue. So it will rotate until it aims at the red square. Da -da. There we go. Now if we pause, let's quickly grab this guy and move him to here. And pause. It'll rotate up to where this guy is. There we go. Nice, simple example one. Alright, so... Just to make it so that we actually have summit to... So we don't have to keep moving around this red cube. We're just going to create another script. I must call this enemy AI. It's not really that complicated, but let's call it for this for now. So, so for the enemy AI, we're going to do something nice and simple. Just going to set up two points for the enemy cube to move between. So, set up one public transform, call it point A. Set up another, we'll call it point B. Then we'll have a speed at which you can sort of travel between. Oh, that's going to be a float, bullet float speed, yeah. So, three variables. You can get rid of this start function. Now, go to this nice simple, just do a transform dot position equals vector three dot loop. And the point, oops, not procedural, whatever. Point A dot position to point B's position. So, this is going to gradually move from one point to another, so sort of between those points. Then we will use a sine wave. So sine wave starts at zero, goes up to one, then get carries, then goes to minus one, then goes from one to minus one continuously, based on sort of time. But you can pass in time to a sine wave, so you do time dot time. So now that would travel at just a normal rate of time going up to one, down to minus one, up to one, just gradually. So what we can do is if we multiply this by our speed, we can make it, we can then make time progress faster or slower for the sine wave, meaning it'll take longer or shorter to get across. So yeah, that's all we actually need to do for this enemy AI, and this should now work. So let's quickly progress back to the game. All right, so if we quickly go to our red cube, if you drag on the enemy AI script, now you go to set up two empty game objects in your scene. Now try and make sure their Y is the same as the enemy cubes, and then just position them wherever you'd like it to sort of move between. So then if you go back to your enemy cube, if you set point A to one of them and point B to the other, and then give it a speed. So I'm giving it 0 0.5, so, it's going to take two seconds to actually get to, to get from, it's going to take two seconds to get to one side to the other, and then it's going to wait for two seconds as well. So if I click play now, my cube, as you can see, is just lurping between point A and point B, at sort of the speed I wanted, and then it's going to wait. So that wait for a couple of seconds, and then it should set off again. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, the turret's nicely following this as well. It's like, casually. And yeah, that's the exact world wide. So now we have a way of sort of making sure that we always know our turret's working without having to keep flipping between the game and the scene. Alright, so in the next video, I will be showing off how to do the shooting system. Thank you.